So welcome to the chapter on Hook's Law. Uh, whenever hero is selected for any particular job, the selection is dependent on its ability to win. Objected to. Now, the following characteristics are used to describe materials. Strength is the ability of to resist breakage when under a stretching, compressing, or shearing force. One which force without breaking. Stiffness is the resistance offers to forces which tend to change its shape or size and resist bending. Ductility is the quality of a material which leads to permanent change of size and shape. Elongate considerably under stretching forces and break ductile material. Drawn into wires or what into other useful shapes without breaking. Making such implements as staples. This is the quality of a material which leads to breakage just after the elastic limit is do not on, on stretching but snap suddenly without warning. Blackboard chalk, bricks, cast iron kits are examples of metal materials. Elastic Density is the material to recover its own shape and size after causing deformation is removed. Any material which does not recover but is deformed permanently plastic is said to be plastic. Material like rubber bands, springs, and metal wires can regain their shapes once causing deformation. Provided the force was not too big to deform the material as to be. In chapter we are going to look at of material. In the molecule solid elastic or stretch properties. When a Space between its molecules in a stretched rubber band, for example, is due to all the forces of attraction between molecules in it. To perform the properties of a spring, so I got a spring with a pointer attached to it, and then the Now my argument is uh, appears on your screen and the position of the pointer when the stretched or nothing is loaded. My pointer points to zero. I have a meter rule there calibrated in millimeters. Every time I add a mass, the spring will stretch and then the pointer will indicate a certain length or the stretch. 
Now I will suspend a mass at the end of the position of the pointer. So I'm going to be masses in intervals of 10 grams. Some mass I will be noting and recording the extension. Now I start with the point zero grams and take in there it's five millimeters. Five millimeters twenty grams and the read ten millimeters. Next is starting reading is fifty millimeters. Fifty of twenty sixty. I have fifty seven. I have nine five and 100 grams i have 50 millimeters excellent it is always necessary loading part i have removed the masses and recording the measurements so obviously the gram will have 50 millimeters so when i go to 90 grams spring is now compressing 80 it returns to slightly hard when it was stretching 70 compresses to 35 millimeters 60 grams 60 gram presses to 30 50 it compresses back to 25 millimeters 40 grams it compresses back to 20 millimeters 30 back to 15 millimeters 10 it goes back to 5 millimeters and when there is no stretch now to calculate stretch in each I do the for the two. so of loading reading the loading reading. So in my case they were both the same and therefore the average is the same. So what I'm going to do is a graph of stretching force against extension. Now first of all I have this table. What I want to note is that force is measured in newtons. In my masses I have them in grams. I need to convert that into newtons grams into kilograms i divide by a thousand and then to convert kilograms it i multiply by 10 so is my new the force so extension is made meters so i had mine in millimeters now to convert i divide by 1000 so again i have one there now i need to plot the graph force against extension now the graph is as appears on your screen now here's the observation i will make now provided the weights used are not too heavy the spring always returns to its original level always constant and the graph of stretching force against extension is a straight line through the origin now in extension of a spring is directly proportional to the stretching force. Now this means E of a spring is directly proportional to the stretching force. But if the stretching force is the extension is also doubled. Now the same wire is stretched. On your screen, A B of the spring 
point E is called limit of the spring. Beyond this point is called investigated and formulated a law relating to the stretching force and the tension. The law states that for a plastic the ex the stretching force that the elastic limit is not exceeded. This relation is proportional to extension in terms of extension. The force is equal to Ke, where K is the constant of proportionality dependent of the spring. The constant is referred to as the spring constant. Now, from this graph, the given by y over changes the y axis. I have x axis. I have extension. So the gradient of this in force over change in extension, or delta f over delta e. For this kind of a graph, the gradient is the spring constant. So for my to my graph and do change in force over change in extension. You need to select points. Remember when you are two points because it's a line. The end is constant anyway. So I'm going to choose 40 and 40, between 30 and 40. At 30 grams, we have extension of and at 40, we had 20. So I'm going to change in force over change in extension. Remember, I have to convert the grams into new again, millimeters into 40 grams is 0.4 newtons. Thousand to get kilograms and multiply by 10 to get newtons. 30 grams is equivalent to 0. Millimeters into meters by a thousand. So 20 millimeters equivalent to 15 millimeters is equivalent to 0. 0.015. Change in four. Three. Over 0. 0.0. .0 0.015. If I come and finish, I'll get 20 newton per meter. 20 newton. Per meter. Now you realize newton per meter is the unit for spring constant. Another important thing to note is that the area under such a graph, that is force versus extension graph, is equal to the work done in stretching the spring. Now you notice that the graph is a triangle, triangle is given by a half base times height. So the area under the graph is given by a half force times extension. Remember, to Ke and hence work done is equal to a half K a half Ke squared. Let's take one again. Now zero point my spring and causes it to stretch centimeters. Now, a metal cube suspended freely spring causes it to stretch by 5 centimeters. If the elastic limit is not exceeded, 
the weight of the metal cube B by spring fetch if a mass of 1.5 kg is M. We want to find the weight or the force on that metal cube. So force is E. So we have K is equal over E. But then is given mg that mass times due to gravity g is given but first we need to calculate k and k is given by f over e. we are going to k from the extension of the half kilogram mass because we have both the extension and the force but force is mg mass times action due to gravity g is usually 10 so k is equal 0.5 or 2 centimeters. 2 centimeters is equivalent to 0.02 meter. So the constant is 215 newton per meter. 215 newton per meter. With that, we can have the solution for A. Since we are using the same spring which obeys Hooke's law. Weight of the cube is given by spring constant times the extension. So we shall have 250 times 5 centimeters is equivalent to 0.05 meters. So we have 12.5 newtons. B. Let the extension produced by the 1.5 kilogram mass be E. Therefore, force is equal to 1.5 times 10, which gives us 15 newtons. From force is equal to Ke, E is given by F over K. So we shall have 15 over 250, which gives us 0 0.06 meters or 6 centimeters. So simple as that.